What's going on guys? Well, coming at you here today from the upper deck here in the Keys house. You can see back there my boat and uh, just a windy, windy, windy day. I'm trying to hide away a little bit here from the wind. I, I even got a little, a little, what are these things called? I think they're called a cat or something. I don't know what they're called. Mouse. I think I call them mouse. I don't know. Whatever these little things here are called to kind of hide out the wind. Man, what a crazy July we had. What a crazy July. Um, I gotta say July probably was one of my weaker months of trading this year, believe it or not, with the market going up and up and up and up nonstop. But I guess that's what happens when you are more inclined to be temporarily bearish in the market overall. And, you know, just seeing how it traded wasn't really liking it i was really expecting for the downside on the markets and for the month of july one of the reasons i think that we didn't get that for the downside and what we're going to do in this video is i'm going to give you the reasons why i didn't think why i think we didn't get that for the downside and i'm going to give you my forecast here moving forward uh one of the reasons i think we didn't see that for the downside is because we didn't see a lot of weak guidance coming out of these companies in uh their earnings reports we simply didn't see that weak guidance coming out uh, out of a lot. We saw weak guidance coming out of some. We saw suspended guidance coming out of others. We saw some have really, really bad earnings and we saw others have amazing earnings. And I think it just teeter-tottered itself and grinded its way higher here. And we got the spy up over 400, you know? And I did trade calls here and there and I traded puts here and there, but it just wasn't the month of July that I expected. Um, but with that, what, is, what does that leave us? Well, leave, it leaves us with one important lesson. Never stay, uh, you know, never allow your bias to take over when you're a day trader and never, um, and never, and never, ever, ever just stay, uh, you know, just fixated in one direction. You have to be nimble as a trader, okay? You have to be nimble as a trader. So now with July behind us and knowing the reasons why July didn't push the markets lower, that leaves us with August. Today's August 1st, green date for me. Today traded uh, a couple of stocks and it leaves us with this month of August. Brand new month, right? And now it leaves us with one question. What does the market do from here? Now, in order to figure that one out, all we gotta do is think about two things. We're gonna look at the chart and we're gonna look at some macro type of stuff and we're gonna come up with a thesis, all right? But before we do that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go downstairs real quick and uh, we're gonna go ahead and sit by the dock because I don't wanna stand up here at the upper deck anymore. All right, guys, so much more comfortable down here and actually a little bit better, a little bit of ways away from the wind, so that's good. Um, you can see the palm trees or the coconut trees like way back over there. You can see how that thing's moving around. It's windy, man. Down here, I'm a little bit more hidden from the wind, so kind of like it. <laughs> so, guys, um, we're going to look at two different reasons why I think the market's going to start to head lower here in the month of August. And when I say lower, guys, let's not get confused here. I don't mean we're going to go and break the year's low. I am not ready 100% yet to concede the year's low and say, hey, that's it, the year's low is in. I'm not 100% ready to do that, but I am getting close to conceding that low. Uh, I'm going to wait a little bit more here. I want to see some more stuff, some more macro stuff come through uh, the wires. I want to see what the what the chart does before I, I concede that low. Uh, but what I want to talk about is that the SPY has two levels. One is the 100-day moving average, which was a tremendous level of support last year, all right, in 2021. And now here in 2022 has been a level of resistance. And that level is trying to hold the SPY down. Above the 100-day moving average, we have the next level of strong potential resistance, which lies between 416 and 417. Uh, tremendous level of support earlier this year turned into resistance, I believe in around April. And now that level, uh, if it does, if it does get tested, is going to be a level that I believe will hold the SPY down tremendously. Now, that is in the technical sense. Where do I think we could find some support? We could find some support. Um, obviously, we'll see. We should see some support in the 400s. Uh, I think in the 395 to 380 area would be the next level of major support, especially 380, 385. But now at the macro, what are we looking at? Well, this month there is no Fed meeting. However, we will have CPI and PPI data come out this month. Now, if those numbers are 
higher than they were previously reported for the month of June, if when the July numbers come out, they're higher than June, get ready. I think at that point in time, we could get nasty and could go down there and visit the year's low. Why? Everyone expects this month, well, July, all right? This month, re the reading for July coming out here in August expects it to be smaller, expects it to be lower than that of June because June was so extraordinarily high that no one thinks that it gets much higher than that. And honestly, I would not be surprised in the least bit if July's number comes in higher than June. Now, there are things that could help it. Commodities did come down in July. Gas came down in July, for example. So, you know, oil came down in July. So if oil came, comes down in July, that could help. That could help inflation bring, come in lower. But if it doesn't, oh my God. Watch out because the majority think that inflation peaked in June. And if for any number of reasons that does not hold true and we have no Fed meeting this month, get ready. So I think those two things together could make the perfect storm to send this market lower. At least down to the 380s is what I'm thinking. All right. If not lower, but at least down to the 380s. And that's how I think we go lower in August. Now, those are my thoughts. Those are my thoughts. What are your thoughts? What do you think happens in August? I'd be interested to know. Drop your comments in the comment section below. Let me know how you're how you're liking this once a week format that I'm doing with this kind of like just big overview of the market, a little bit of a dock talk, if you will, here sitting from sitting in the dock at the in the Florida the Keys house. Let me know your thoughts, guys. Remember to smash the like button for me and to come on by and visit me at the daytraderchatroom.com. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching. I'll catch you on another one.